Okay, so now we have an update from our fire chief on how he's doing with his goals and objectives for this year. If you click on 
the individual thing, it does have detail about what the inspection would be or the meeting would be. This certainly is not a complete list because during the day we can have uh, four or five people show up at the station asking for information, asking for permits. Um, so it's by, by no means a complete list, but we do try and pick that up with our activity tracker. We have also created <coughs> a call log, so daily when we receive calls in uh, and send calls out, we are keeping a daily log of our calls. So, uh, and unfortunately our server, we're still, we're still working out some glitches with our new server system, but um, we have a shared file where uh, if Taryn is receiving phone calls, checking messages, or Nick is, we can populate it into that shared file and um, I can go in and they'll check off if there's stuff that I need to call back or if Nick needs to call back. And then basically it has uh, you know, a completion date and time when that specific thing has been done out. So uh, that'll be attached to that monthly report as well. So uh, that's basically, that's what we have for number one and two of our goals and objectives. So I don't know if you want to make comments on that before I go to the next or if you just want me to go through all of them. Uh, the initial training and inspection schedule for uh, the full-time fire prevention lieutenant has been completed according to the projected time frame, and the Station Smarts program is being used for some of the inspections. However, we are waiting for a system update from the company for our fire incident reporting. Uh, they're looking to have that in place within the next couple of months. Uh, Nicholas McKenna was brought on board April 24, 2014. Uh, he has completed his task that we uh, had set upon his hiring. He has completed his basic fire inspector training as well as, as his fire inspector one course. <clears throat> He's also received training along with myself in the updated fire code fire 527 CMR, which is fire regulation, which is now adopted NFPA 1. And I think I had explained to you at the last meeting we've gone to a book that used to be this thick to one that's this thick with a set of amendments that are that thick. Um, so both Nick and I are working very hard to review uh, this new code and its amend amendments. It's added a lot of uh, a lot of additional things. Willie has one section of 527 CMR 12 for electrical code, and he knows how thick and how many additions there are of the electrical code that you have to, to review. So um, I am also working with Tim Nyhart, and we had spoken about that as well. That uh, with the adoption of 520 CMR. It has taken some permitting out of the hands of the fire department uh, in an effort to streamline at the state level. So the building permit covers specific fire protection. Um, so sprinklers, fire alarm, commercial food suppression systems, it's one permit now. So it's per permitted through the building department. There are still portions of the building code that require the plans, plan reviews be conducted by the fire department um, we have a 10 day review cycle uh, under building code with up to 30 days extension on that. So Tim and I are working out this checkoff sheet of how we're going to do all this. Um, I have spoken with the Marshal's office and they're comfortable with us just using the same uh, permit form that we have now that will be that could be in the building inspector's office just so we get specific information that can be attached to that building card so we make sure they have the proper um, license number and then it's not expired. So Tim and I are working very hard on that as we speak along with many other chiefs. <clears throat> so uh, the town... Is this, is this report through dispatch or through your computer system? That's, that's through our... We still have the run sheets. So we do run sheets and we pull the information off. So all being entered on... on that's your, being entered into an Excel spreadsheet. That's correct. Will this... That'll be part of your monthly... No, will this be part of your uh, computer program? Yes, that's the one part that we're waiting for. Yes. Okay. Uh, it used to, we used to have FirePoint, but it's it, they never did any updates. We've gone to Station Smarts, but they're they're finishing up the final portion of this section. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, anyways, we're, so we're working on that. Um, so this, this process of getting this all together has become a priority as well, and it has impacted some of our other goals and objectives. <clears throat> so Nick has been cleared by me to complete all of the following inspections uh, because I delegate authority to Nick. So I wanted to make sure that he was um, 
very comfortable and he is very capable, but it's a lot, it's a lot to learn. And a lot of it's done over time and you, you learn more and more as you go. So I am comfortable with all of these, including uh, at the end I added one, which is the quarterly inspection of extended care facilities. Uh, so he has done that. And I am also monitoring his, I, I, I'm not just sending him out alone forever here. So I do frequent checks. I'll just ride along with him and make sure that everything is being properly uh, entered and that he's hitting all the, the really important things that he needs, you know, just to make sure that it's getting done correctly. Uh, so quality control basically through the fire chief. So that's what I have for that portion. So that has been, has been working quite well. <coughs> uh, completion of the draft of fire department standard operating procedures and guidelines with a review of the draft by department officers and staff is ongoing. I did not reach my goal for adoption in August <coughs> due to my underestimate of workload. However, I have been working hard towards its completion and we will we'll make every effort to have it adopted by the May 2015 deadline. Um, I, I don't think, it, in my opinion, I've reviewed boilerplate SOPs and SOGs and it I don't feel comfortable just handing out a boilerplate SOP. So I've been going through them individually. Um, one of the things was working with, well now Mike Mason, we're moving forward with dispatch. There's a whole portion on dispatch that integrates with fire. So how we dispatch to a specific call, um, we're now working on those. So I think this will start moving forward a little bit easier for me. <coughs> Uh, we do have basic SOPs and SOGs, our, our mission statement, what the requirements are of our officers and that stuff are in place. They do have that, um, but we're going through and making sure that it's, it's, it's working right for Hadley. Any questions on that one? Uh, evaluation of the MRI study with breakout of completed and implemented action items and review of plan of action based on priority of needs and future goals and objectives. <clears throat> of the department, it's ongoing and the cost analysis for implementation is currently it's still in process. Uh, we have multiple action items right now that are in process, including uh, the purchase of the command vehicle, which was one of the action items, uh, the new rescue pupper, review and update of SOPs and SOGs, and review and evaluation of command staff. So all that is in process and um, should be targeted, hopefully, uh, probably not the new rescue pumper, but the other stuff, hopefully by the end of this first contract. And then the final is the review of the current ambulance services and identify current strengths and weaknesses in service as well as deficiencies in the contract. Provide analysis of costs for services provided and recommendations on multiple courses of action and potential services, service options for the town of Hadley with analysis of these costs. <clears throat> so this objective has, has been started, however it's only in its initial review and dealing with the one year extension of the contract right now with David. Um, we are scheduled to be meeting this Friday uh, with the town manager in Amherst. Uh, I have requested information from Hampshire County Chiefs and will be specifically meeting with one community who has just implemented a new service. Uh, he's willing to just give me his big book of information that he put together. Uh, the chief is willing to provide me with the steps he took in its creation along with information on startup costs and analysis. Um, the uh, run sheet that you have there was uh, one item as part of this so we can start evaluating the EMS calls. Uh, we can start reviewing basic versus advanced level of care, uh, time frames of what it's taking for our EMTs to get there. Um, so we're getting, we're getting some good data now on the number of calls and you can see just that one month uh, there's a substantial number of EMS calls in the town of Havoc. And it does not seem to be getting any less. So I appreciate your review and comments on the progress of my goals and objectives. And please feel free to let me know if you have any questions or if you have any comments for me or what you think. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, we look forward to still working with you. And you've got time to finish your completion. And I think we're on the right track. Doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Good. Two questions. Okay. Um, well, that sentiment. Um, but questions I have: one, in terms of um, additional resources, you know, again, just looking for ways to leverage 
the university, now that we have some sort of more formality around agreement with them, um, I would imagine that some of that data entry that you're doing relative to the calls and stuff, maybe you need to have inside knowledge to make it accurate. Yeah. But okay, so there's not much opportunity to use a, an intern or um, anybody from UMass? Um, I guess it depends on who the intern is and yeah. what kind of length of time they might be willing to do it for. If it's mm -hmm. a short term thing, it's it's pretty difficult to, I, I mean, the, for example, the emperors, the code numbers that you have to put with these calls, mm -hmm. uh, the books about that. that so, can, have to be. so you'd have to be matching that up and you kind of have to have an idea of the language of it as well. But I mean, certainly it's something we could, we could certainly look into. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we do have some folks in-house that have been helping out. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an IT person in-house who's helping us with our our server now mm -hmm. to, to try and work out some of these bugs. Uh, that document that you have right there, we had uh, about half a year's worth managed into the, the cloud system somewhere. So mm -hmm. we worked feverishly over the past week to redo it and they're still looking for those documents. So we're trying to work out these little glitches that that happened. Um, and you know, we've worked a lot. We've never had any kind of technology like this in the station. We've had a laptop and a computer, and that's it. So we're, you know, it's still a learning process for us, but it takes some new. But I think we're going in the right direction. We've been really working hard. I know Nick has been um, really working hard about keeping track of his, his daytime stuff. And like I said, it's just trying to figure out this way to find that time that's not taking away from inspection time and other priorities because it takes some time to generate all this information into a, into a report. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there's a lot that goes on during the day. I'm just going back and reading, this is just March, and you know, some, some days there's five or six pages of, of you know, important information of what you're getting done during the day. Mm -hmm. And I certainly wouldn't remember it at the end of the day if I no. tried to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> then the other uh, question I have is just relative to this process. This is the, I think the first time we've really done this set goals and now we're seven months I guess into it beyond when we originally um, had agreement on them. Is there anything at this point that you would have um, suggested differently in terms of the goals that we established? Because um, that happens sometimes. You get into a year and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I should have made that a priority. Something's trumping something yeah. else. There's been a number of things and that's why it was difficult when I reviewed this because I was kind of concerned that some of the items I didn't meet that, that time frame, but it was just physically impossible because other things came up that were more of a priority. Mm -hmm. One of them being this whole implementation of this, uh, this inspection procedure. You know, it's, it's critical that we get that in place because we, mm -hmm. we just have tons of business that's constantly coming in, whether it's alterations to systems or new systems. So Tim and I are working really hard on that to make that so it's easier and that these folks, you know, have checklists where obviously we're uh, we're looking at what Amherst has in place. The state uh, building inspector and I have talked because we have we share properties at UMass. So uh, one of the state inspectors had put together a checklist. So we're taking information from a lot of different agencies and trying to put what's best to the town, um, to the town, and making sure that we're we're getting in what we need for those fees. Even as far as the SOPs, there is that something that UMass could help us out with. I mean, they, I'm sure they must have in place their procedures? Well, I mean, we have examples of procedures from Hatfield, um, but they're very, it's very boilerplate. So, uh, and some of it doesn't pertain to Hadley. We have different ways of dispatching, yeah. different ways of responding well, calls. I, I know, and your mass so, would be the same thing. It'd be a little different than... Yeah, than but I mean, yes, we're stealing yeah. information from all over the place. The only thing that, that we're going to need further down the road here, Mike, is the EMS calls of the actual response uh, times of the ambulance is going to be pretty critical when we come down to services or what we have now or what we're going to fund. Well, that's, provided by the that's provided by Amherst. Amherst puts together so any any calls you that do have all that logged in. They have been giving us their their response time. I know we, were, well, we talked about it before. So. They they give us response times that are over the allowed <laughs> response time. So if they go over that um, ALS for a full time department. You know, they give us that information. So, so it's just exception reporting. Yes. Yep. They don't give you a, a list of all the calls, though. Wasn't that part of the agreement as well? I thought that was part of the agreement. We yeah. just spoke about it. Mm -hmm. It was part of the original agreement. It's part of the agreement. You're not getting it. 
Well, yeah. yeah um, just to know how much money they're making. They, they are giving, well, they're giving us a, the number of calls, but they're not breaking it down by individual on what, what the time frame is for response. So, you know what I mean? So, we can get the number of calls that they're going to. Um, so, I mean, that's something that's that we'll, we'll be discussing. Yeah. But each call is different depending on the acuity of the call. Yep. Yeah. The other, the other thing that we're, you know, we'll be discussing is the, uh, I had spoken with a few other chiefs, but the idea of them actually calling into our dispatch center to let it, let them know that they're on scene. So that if we have responders that are en route and there's already an ambulance there, they around. can dial it down. That's what um, that's So that's one of the other things that we'll be discussing as well. And it should be something simple now. We have our new radios. They've been programmed with all the frequencies in them. Um, so. So I'll ask a couple. So in the ambulance, you're looking at what was done in another community to build to actually put one in place. You were still looking at maybe possibly having someone come in and provide ambulance service as well. Uh, have you looked at any of that? As yes. Well, I mean, we have an RFP that we was created. Um, but yes, I've I've spoken with some. I've spoken with one community. Um, about it, and they're very interested in talking with us. If Southampton put in another ambulance last year, and they have two ambulances over there, little old Southampton, what do you think Hadley could do with what we do for runs over here? We have to look at it all. I know, but so, I'm just giving you a, a, a comparison. Basically, what, what does Southampton have, now, and what do we have? Better. That's what I'm saying. With all these numbers and these figures, we can still yeah. compile them. I mean, it's, it's not a rocket scientist to tell you if we, uh, these other smaller communities are making it work and they're self-sufficient in what they get out of their runs. Just two Did towns we, over, three towns uh, merged. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's geographics, I'm sure, but there's a lot of options out there. I think I think you'll be surprised with some of the information that you get. We've gotten a lot of this information already, so it's updating it. I mean, we we had information from billing companies doing assessments on the town force as part of that six-year study we did. I interviewed multiple chiefs with ambulances, and you know, I, we David and I drafted um, a basic cost estimate of what the annual cost would be with revenues. So it's basically just updating that information and getting that to you. That was forwarded to the select board about a year ago now, I think. Um, it was a for people itself. who weren't, you know, party to that. So then my other, as to go on Molly's question a little bit, as you think about, you know, day-to-day -day stuff comes up, that's kind of what you're kind of saying, though. The new inspection system is sort of a day-to-day -day thing that came in and actually became more than what you, you needed to do. Uh, at some point, you need to, uh, I just as a comment, that's when you need to come to us and say, hey, look, this is actually something that's coming into my world that's going to take a lot of time, and maybe I want to change my priorities and my, my goals for this year and move some things around. And just don't feel, don't feel like you have to stick with your goals. If you have something that comes up, come talk to us and say, this needs to move. Um, my, the building committee has taken all my time. They invite me to all their meetings. I need to move a priority so I can spend more time on the building with the building committee. Um, those are things that um, we'd like to see. You know, so if those do come up and, and, and factor into your ability to do what we set as priorities, let us know ahead of time that yeah, this is what you like to move around and why you're moving things around, and, and let us know and we can agree to it then. Um, this is the first time we've done it. I just want to make sure you knew that that was definitely something. There's not. It's the first time I've done it. It's kind of a little bit micromanaging him a little bit, don't you think? Well, we give no, him the goals. Gives him the ability I know, to but I mean, it gives him the ability. To, yeah. I know, but just sometimes things that comes up for him aren't. He has to respond to them quicker than. Day to day. Yes. So day to day, 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 but day this, long term. Yeah, changing the uh, how you do the inspections has been a big deal. That's something mm -hmm. that takes a lot of time. That's something you should have brought and said, "Hey, I need to yeah. rearrange." Mm -hmm. um, but he has to do it. He did have to do it. And we shouldn't have helped, you know, it's not something to take out something from his, to move something from his, if you do this in the future, okay. just don't feel like you have to. I mean, well, he's I appreciate he's going sitting there partying, you know. 
to two inch. That's, that's all I need is that. <laughs> but part of it's to alleviate the stress on the individual. Yes. So that if Mike came to, it's a concept. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> but if you came in and we all said, yeah, no, we're totally fine with that, then you would, wouldn't be worrying about something else, whereas otherwise you might be stressing about it. So. We stress about a lot of things because yeah. we're, you know, I mean, it's, it's that's part of the job yes. description, isn't it? Stress, yeah, stress I think, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Comes in that other things but, aside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you yeah, very much. Fine. Thank you. Bye.